regular viewer of this very channel. Someone just like you sent in a great question about their impending debut, Wrestling Under a Mask. And I've got some information and some insight from my own experience to share with you next. I'm Mike Quackenbush, this is Till We Make It, and if you are passionate about the craft of professional wrestling and you're never done learning about it, then make sure that you subscribe to my channel now so that you never miss out. Loyal member of the Till We Make It tribe, Nick, sent me an email asking about his upcoming debut, Wrestling Under a Mask, and whether or not he should be training with his mask on. I think the answer to this is an emphatic yes, and I want to get into some of the details about two things to evaluate before you get in the ring, three areas of focus once you're in the ring with the mask on, and one that needs evaluation after the fact. So one of the two things I think you need to consider very carefully before getting in the ring with your mask on is this. Does the mask fit? The fit of your mask is key. It should be snug on your head and perhaps at first feel a little bit over tight. But just like when you get a new pair of dress shoes or a pair of jeans, the mask can be broken in over the course of its first few wears. So even if it is not especially comfortable on your head the first one, two, or three times that you wear it, by the time you've worn it 10 times or 20 times, you will have broken that mask in the same way that you break in dress shoes or your favorite pair of jeans. A further note about the fit of your mask. It should never be loose on your head. Now, after years of wear and tear, a mask can become loose, but I mean at the very beginning of the lifespan of a mask that you have just purchased, it should not be loose. If so, it will easily become askew or be jostled around, and this is problematic as we're going to talk about in just a moment. If you get a brand new mask made for you and it already fits loose on your head, I would encourage you to have a conversation with the person who crafted it for you about having those adjustments made before the first match in that mask is ever wrestled. The second thing you need to bring your attention to before even getting in the ring with your mask on is to assess how much of your face is hidden by the mask. Some masks only occlude part of the face Others occlude the entire face, and here is why this assessment is important. When we are in the ring performing, we have three theatrical tools to call on to help us make the performance. And those theatrical tools are our body language, our vocalizations, what we do with our voice, and our facial expressions. And if one of those three theatrical tools are being removed from the performance, like your facial expressions, because they're hidden by your mask, the other two, vocalizations and body language, will have to pick up the slack. That means you're gonna dial up your vocals and dial up your body language to make up for the lack of facial expressions in the performance. Once you actually get into the ring with your mask on, you're going to discover that three key faculties every wrestler must rely on are being impaired or otherwise restricted by the mask. And the first one that you've got to focus on is your vision. Now, most masks have some kind of eye port, although, based on my own experience from decades past, in which I've wrestled under a dozen different masks, I have absolutely been made to wrestle in a mask that only had very narrow slits for eyes. It did not have full eye ports. And in some masks that do have eye ports, the ports themselves are not open. They are covered with a screen or a shield. Now, any mask, based on how it sits on your face, is likely to diminish your peripheral vision. And you're going to want to dial into that as quickly as possible, as well as assess any other way in which your vision is impaired by the mask itself. Now, when you discover what the limits of your periphery are, the way to compensate for that is by making bolder movements with your shoulder, neck, and head. So dial up that body language to make sure you still have a full field of vision and you can see people coming at you, which might be important in a pro wrestling match. 
The second area of focus, once you get in the ring with your mask on, is to dial into the way in which your hearing is affected by the mask. A well-made mask will be double or triple lined. It may be made from a very soft but cushy fabric that muffles all the sounds that you hear. Or a mask that has horns, spikes, or other ornate details coming off of it might have that attached right over your ear, further impairing the way in which you'll hear everything going on in the ring. I have had masks on where the only thing I could hear through that mask was the sound of the bell being rung. I couldn't hear my entrance music. I couldn't hear the referee hitting the mat. All I could hear was the shrill peals of the ring bell and nothing else. So get a handle on whether or not you'll be able to hear much while you're in the ring with the mask on. This might be very relevant information to share with the person you are performing with if they are anticipating being able to give you instructions or reminders as the match wears on. And if you discover that you can't hear whatsoever inside that mini sensory deprivation tank, you'll have to be very good at remembering entire matches from end to end without any variation or omission. If that sounds like a whole lot to remember, don't worry. I've got an exercise that you can play on your very next road trip that I talk about in this video to help you build up your memory for recalling spots. And that third thing you've got to assess when you are in the ring with your mask on is the way in which your breathing patterns may need to change throughout the match. You might be very well adjusted to being able to draw a deep breath in through your nose and out through your mouth after every time you kick out from a pinning attempt. But the mask may not allow you to draw deep breaths the way that you used to. Now, you might need two or three deep breaths to feel the same effect that you used to from just taking one big old gulp of oxygen before moving on to the next part of the match. So this may impact things like your pacing. It may impact where you choose to deploy tempo changes in the match. And it may cause you to want to reorganize your phrasing of spots. And if that concept is relatively new to you, or you'd like more detail about it, guess what? Your old pal Mike has got a video all about phrasing, and it is linked above. So you're done in the ring for the night. You've already assessed the fit of your mask. You make sure that it is snug on your head, and you've remembered the way in which it affects the overall performance by dialing up your vocals and your body language to take the place of the diminished facial expressions we all rely on for storytelling purposes. And while in the ring, you're going to have to draw focus into the ways that your vision, your hearing, and your breathing are restricted by the mask itself. But what about afterward? You're out of the ring now, all done. This is when you need to dial into the way in which your cardiovascular training may need to be changed to get you ready for a career wrestling under a mask. You may come out of that experience feeling like all the cardio conditioning you've been doing up to this point in time has done very little to prepare you for the rigors and challenges of being under a mask, under the hot lights, performing professional wrestling. And if so, consider making your cardio regimen not only longer, but also more rigorous so that you feel better prepared when you must actually be out in front of the paying customers with that mask on, making it look like you know how to wrestle. Portraying a mask character in a wrestling ring is a fun and exciting challenge that you should never shy away from. But it does come with challenges that unmasked performers never have to contend with. And the sooner you can prepare yourself for those challenges, the better off you'll be. I think it's best to train in the actual mask you'll be performing in. But if that's not possible because the mask hasn't been delivered yet, or maybe it hasn't even been designed yet, wrestling in any mask is better preparation than wrestling in no mask whatsoever. Before that first night of practice where you intend to be in the ring underneath your hood, make sure to mention it respectfully to your trainer. Any coach that's been around longer than a cup of coffee will fully appreciate the need to get in reps performing underneath a mask so that all important first match comes off beautifully. If you learned something today, make sure to drop me a like, subscribe to the channel, and do those things which would make the YouTube algorithm, if it had a face, smile. 
Like, comment, and ring the notification bell. That's how YouTube knows you like it. I will keep on making the videos. You keep on being awesome, huh? Together we'll keep on faking it.